Good evening, unit holders of First Street Estate Investment Trust, First Street. Thank you for joining us this evening at the CIAS First Street Virtual Information Session. As you know, on the 18th of May, 2022, First Street announced it will be divesting Siloam Hospital, Surabaya, for a consideration of IDR 430 billion. That is 40.9 million Singapore dollars yeah. to PT Siloam International Hospitals and PT uh, Mega Pratama Karya Bersama through the direct wholly owned subsidiaries of its trustees, Perpetual Asia Limited, namely Prime Rich Investments Private Limited and Surabaya Hospitals Investment Private Limited. The press release also mentioned the origin, original cost of acquisition of Siloam Hospital Surabaya SHS was 16.8 million Singapore dollars in 2006 and hence the selling price of 40.9 million dollars translates to a huge capital gain of over 143.2 percent. However, according to the SGX announcement, it revealed a loss of 0.6 million upon the disposal of SHS. You unit holders will be more informed through this session, we hope, about the proposed divestment of Ceylon hospitals. Why and, and why it is being done now? What is the compelling reason? Surabaya, how will it impact your <coughs> investments and whether this is a fair deal for you? So, let me uh, introduce the senior management and the director, uh, Mr. Richard Tan on my left, independent director. Oh, Mr. Richard Tan, the independent director. All right, thank you for coming, Richard. Thank you. And uh, Victor Tan, whom you all know very well, uh, executive director and chief executive officer. So we will kick off the session uh, with a corporate presentation, uh, followed by a Q&A session where we will address your questions. So please submit your questions via the pinhole link shared in the confirmation email. Without further ado then, I will now ask Richard and Victor to take us through with a short presentation. Over to you, gentlemen. Thank you, David. And good evening unique holders of uh, First Week. Thank you for joining us at today's virtual information session for the proposed divestment of Slum Hospital Surabaya. I'm uh, Tan Chuan Lai Richard, I'm an independent director of the manager of uh, First Week. And with me today is uh, Victor Tan, CEO of uh, the manager whom I'm sure all of you are very familiar with. We are here today to give you an overview of and the rationale for the proposed divestment of Siloam Hospital Surabaya and to address any questions you may have with regard to these transactions. <clears throat> Following all the strategic actions we have taken over the past couple of years, First Week is in a position of stability today and we wouldn't have achieved this without your patience and continued support. We look forward to your support for this transaction too. Our first, a very quick overview of our agenda before we begin. <coughs> so Victor, we'll, start, uh, we'll first start with the background to the Salam Hospital Surabaya before he takes us through the overview of the proposed investment, the rationale and the financial effects of the transactions. I will then share the thoughts of the independent financial advisor, the IFA, and independent directors of First Week, as well as what are the next steps to be taken by unit holders before we move to the Q&A session. So, Victor, please, over to you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, good evening to all of my fellow unit holders. Maybe I'll just give a quick uh, overview of this uh, Siloam Hospital Surabaya. As some of you may know, uh, this hospital was actually built uh, you know, sometime in the 70s, okay? and it's actually located <coughs> in the heart of Indonesia's second largest city, Surabaya. And this was part of our IPO asset in 2006. 
And today, this hospital comprises five integrated purpose-built uh, hospital buildings and ranging from two to fifth story <coughs> and with 162 beds in total. Given that this hospital was constructed back in 1977, it faced increasing competition from new facilities as well as existing healthcare competitors with upgraded uh, facility. In 2015, as some of you may recall, we received your approval for an asset sort transaction with our previous sponsor, then Lipo Karachi, uh, which involved development work for a new hospital facility. And this was actually constructed on the area outlined in red, as shown on the slide. And first bit was to acquire the new hospital facility upon the completion and concurrently divest this aging existing Surabaya Hospital. Then in 2018, unfortunately, a road subsidence took place along Gubeng Highway, uh, Surabaya. This was actually near uh, our Silom Hospital, Surabaya. And this has kind of like hawked the development work at the site. Tax consultant, development, and also construction-related consultant, legal counsel, and also valuer were engaged to conduct feasibility study, and from the feasibility study, it was determined that if we were to restart the development work, we would have incurred additional development costs as well as there will be excessive development risk. Unfortunately, the desired outcome to sort the age, aging Kilom Hospital Rabaya with a new healthcare facility did not materialize. Then in June 2020, given that this development work were no longer progressing, we have decided to serve a termination notice to PTSK, which is a subsidiary of uh, Lipo Karachi, to terminate uh, the development work agreement. So over the next one and a half year, uh, Lipo Karachi and First Street also has held uh, many settlement discussions. And finally, in December last year, parties are able to enter into a settlement agreement. And early this year, you have given us the approval uh, on the relevant resolution through an EGM. And, and I'm happy to report that, as said last month, we have, we have received the full and final settlement of all obligation amounting to $30.6 million. And this whole amount has been received. And of course, we couldn't have done this without the support of our dear unit holder. So we want to thank all of you for your unwavering support in our strategic action in the last couple of years that have brought first read to our position of stability today. With that background, I would now like to share more about the proposed divestment of this hospital. First, the highlight. Okay, May 2022, we announced the proposed divestment of Silom Hospital Surabaya to Silom through the divestment of a property holding company to Silom and its subsidiary. The proposed divestment followed the settlement in respect of the terminated development work adjacent to Silom Hospital Surabaya, which I will share about, which I've shared about in the earlier slide. And the agreed property value is at the premium of 143% over the purchase price of the property way back in 2006. This is one of the IPO assets. And it is also at a slight premium over the average of the two independent valuation. And also following this divestment, the weighted average age of our property will also improve from 16.2 years to 15.7 years. And more importantly, the key rationale for this divestment is that it is an opportunity to recycle a mature asset that we have held since IPO and it's a holistic approach to resolve any downstream complication. I will now expand on the rationale and also the financial effect for this transaction. Unit owner may be familiar with our 2.0 growth strategy, which we unveiled in December last year, with four strategic pillars. They are diversified into developed market, reshaped portfolio for capital efficient growth, 
And our third and fourth pillar are strengthening our capital structure to remain resilient and also to continue the pivot to ride the mega trend. And with this strategic pillar in mind, we have increased our exposure to developed market to close to 25% of our total portfolio value now. We also have successfully priced Singapore's first CGIF guaranteed healthcare social bond in April this year. And we also have entered into settlement agreement to strengthen our capital structure and to allow capital recycling towards high growth area. And as we continue to carry out our 2.0 growth strategy, we are excited about this proposed divestment of Silom Hospital Surabaya, which is in alignment with one of our four strategic pillars to reshape our portfolio for capital efficient growth. And the proposed divestment will also enable us to realize value from a mature asset. Two independent property valuers were appointed for the purpose of determining the market value of Silom Hospital Surabaya. They are Knight Frank and Cushman and Whitfield. And with reference to the valuation that the independent valuer derived at, and following extensive negotiation on the willing buyer and willing seller basis by first read with Silom, it was agreed that the divestment consideration for this hospital was rupiah 430 billion, which is approximately 40.9 million Sing dollar. And this divestment consideration represents approximately a slight premium to the average of the two independent valuation of Silom Hospital Surabaya. It also represents 143.2% capital gain over first bid original purchase. And the proposed divestment will therefore enable us to reap capital gain and to recycle capital. As you can see from these two charts, on the left, it shows that the weighted average age of property for first bid portfolio, and on the right, it shows the uh, weighted average age of portfolio for the Indonesia uh, portfolio. And following the proposed divestment, the WAP for first three portfolio will improve from 16.2 year to 15.7. And also for the Indonesia portfolio, it will, it will improve from 14.4 year to 13.3 years. Furthermore, following the termination of the development work agreement, the runway to construct a new healthcare facility has become even longer. And the road subsidence incident has impacted the construction work and made the redevelopment work even more complex and challenging, which will result in us incurring additional development costs and also taking on higher and excessive development risks. And we would just like to share that at this point, uh, following the road subsidence uh, incident event, the manager team has conducted a broad range of feasibility study to determine that if we could restart the development work, work we, could, we also explore many options and also many structures with the support of our sponsor, where at one stage, we even contemplating whether our sponsor OUE could assist us in our development advisor. We also have consulted many professionals as well, and the board was fully aware of the process and the length we went to and to determine if, in fact, we should continue to or restructure, or restructure this project. And after all this process, it is determined that it's more prudent for First Street not to bear this excessive development risk. We understand that either uh, Lipo Karachi or Silom will be continuing the development work at the site, including the construction of a new healthcare facility. Hence, upon the completion of the new facility, the tenant of the existing Surabaya Hospital is likely to move into the new facility adjacent to this existing Silom Hospital Surabaya. Hence, divesting this existing hospital in Surabaya is a prudent exit strategy for First Street to avoid any dow downstream risk as well as any complication. Okay, this slide shows an overview of the pro forma effect on the divestment based on FY 2021 audited account and unit price of 
30.5 cents as at 31st of December 2021. Okay, uh, and the Performa Financial is only for illustrative purpose only. Okay, FY 2021, the DPU of 2.61 cents has already been paid out to the unit holder. Okay, uh, again, I stress that this is for the purpose of illustration. After the proposed divestment, the DPU for FY 2021 would have dipped to 2.28 cents with view of 7.5%, largely due to the loss of rental income which that we have potentially received if we were to hold on to this asset. And also, the, uh, once we divest this uh, Surabaya Hospital, our NAB also have declined slightly to 30.48 cents. Nonetheless, the proposed divestment is an opportunity for us to reach a capital gain of about 143% and to recycle a mature asset that was built in 1977 uh, instead of taking on excessive development risk. And also, it is a prudent exit strategy and a holistic approach for us to resolving all the downstream complications. It will also bring an improvement to our weighted average of uh, property for, from 16.2 years to 15.7 years. And more importantly, this divestment is in line with first read 2.0 growth strategy to reshape portfolio for capital efficient growth. The net proceed of this proposed divestment will be used to repay debt, finance capital expenditure, or any asset and enhancement work, and can be used for any general corporate and working capital, and we can also use it to distribute as capital gain to unit holder. Thank you. That ends my presentation, and I will now hand the time back to uh, Richard <coughs> to share the recommendation of IFA, IFA for the transaction. Thank you, Victor. On behalf of the independent directors and the audit and risk committee, we like to point out that the independent financial advisor, the IFA, is of the opinion that the transaction is based on normal commercial terms and is not prejudicial to the interests of First Reef and its minority unit holders. <coughs> Having considered the rationale of the proposed divestment and the due process undertaken, the independent directors therefore recommended that unit holders vote in favour of this divestment at the uh, EGM. And these are the key dates that uh, you should take note of. You would have received our notice of EGM, which is scheduled for 25th July at 2.30pm and will be held by way of uh, electronic means. <coughs> and to attend the EGM, pre-registration is required by 22nd July at 2.30, please take note of the date. <coughs> and please also note that this is also the deadline. 22nd July 2.30 is also the deadline for lodgement of the proxy form. <coughs> the board and management of First Rig understand and appreciate your participation for the EGM. And to show our appreciation, we will be sending a $15 NTUC fair price voucher to all unit holders who hold units through their securities account with the CDP and participate in this virtual EGM by submitting their votes validly. <coughs> we look forward to your continued support and also seek approval for this transaction. Thank you and I will now hand the time back to David. David. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Let's start the conversation with the most uh, important question in the minds of your unit holders. Is my DPU going to increase? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't give projection on DPU, but I, I'm sure your DPU is not going to drop as per not going to what, drop. what you will see from the uh, illustrative uh, performance financial. It won't drop. But yeah, it won't drop that drastically. Okay, yes. and Write me more cash rich. Now. That's, that's correct, that's correct. And yeah. So, you know, a lot of retirees are in your list of unit holders list. So they will be asking, will I get a bit more DPU? We, we, we certainly hope to continue to be able to uh, you know, 
give a very stable uh, uh, dividend to our uni holder. So this is uh, something that me and my team will, will work hard to make sure that we will continue to be able to pay out uh, a stable and consistent DPU to our uni holder. Good. Yeah. Uh, well, you've been doing that. You've been doing that, right, all these years. That's right. Victor, that's right. they have confidence in you and the board, and I'm sure you'll continue to do the right yes. thing. Yes. Now, let me start uh, with the first question. Can you give your unit holders an update on performance of the Japanese assets since the REITs acquired REM? Have they met or exceeded management's expectations? Yeah, we, we actually bought the uh, Japan portfolio. Uh, it was actually completed uh, sometime in uh, March this year. You know? So it's only about a couple of months since we hold this Japan portfolio. You know? mm. uh, and this Japan asset, you know, 12 of them, these are high quality assets. Uh, and it was actually master tenant to uh, three very experienced, you know, well-regarded uh, uh, operator. You know? So, and, and, and as far as I understand, you know, they have been very uh, consistent you know, uh, in paying their renter to us. So we don't actually have any issue with any of the renter uh, uh, collection from them. And at the same time that we also know that in the past, you know, I mean, the good thing for us is that we, we actually bought this asset during the COVID mm. uh, uh, yeah. uh, period. You know, but, uh, you know, in fact, before the COVID, I've actually brought my director to see the, the, the nursing home, you know, right. Richard was actually mm. uh, with us you know, during that trip. So we actually have seen the <coughs> asset uh, before we even acquire, acquiring uh, it. Notwithstanding that we acquired during the COVID uh, period, but we actually seen the asset before. And we like it, we like the asset. This is the reason why we, we approach our uh, And this parents. nursing home, are they better than Singapore ones? Definitely, definitely. A lot better, a lot better, you know. I should, uh, I should be visiting that. You, yeah, I mean, if, I mean, if, if we got a yeah. chance, they would like to invite you to come, come along. You, and see thank you, thank you. I'm reaching an age where I need a nursing home soon. Yeah, you you will be surrounded by cherry blossoms. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes, very very nice. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, the Japanese uh, yen has taken a tumble. How is it going to affect your REIT? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know that we have actually make make our maiden uh, acquisition in, in in Japan. You know, we we bought about three hundred million of uh, worth of uh, uh, value of asset in Japan we are actually looking at growing more uh, of our presence in Japan. So we'll be looking at buying a lot more uh, healthcare assets in Japan. So the, the devaluation of the Japanese yen is it, a, a positive to us. So that now we can actually buy uh, you know, some of these assets a little bit cheaper you mm. know, compared to, compared to uh, in the past. You know. Of course, uh, we have bought uh, the first batch of it. I mean, the good thing is that this first batch of the portfolio only contribute about 22% of our total uh, AUM. So it's not really a big portion yet, not a big chunk yet. You know, the bulk of our uh, asset under management is still in Indonesia, 75% uh, of them. You know. So yes, the, unfortunately, the Japan yes has, has taken a tumble and, and it reached the 20-year low. Uh, but may not be for long with the current... Uh, that's right. That's right. I mean, if, yeah. I, I, I spoke to some Japanese... Uh, investor and and they are very confident that this is this is the worst case. Especially with the recent precisely, precisely. election results, they're having two third majority now. Yeah, yeah. They're in a very steady uh, hand definitely, and uh, correct the government. So that would be a temporary uh, situation. I would think so as well. I would think so as well. Uh, nevertheless, uh, obviously we will evaluate the the uh, situation and and I mean if there's a need, we definitely will look at hedging some of our. But you still policy. have seventy five percent. In Indonesia, AUM in Indonesia. Yep, yep. Can you give us a quick overview of the pace of recovery in Indonesia? Okay, I think Indonesia, like Singapore, I think they also start to ease their, uh, you know, their uh, restriction, you know, the COVID restriction, and they also have uh, also ease their quarantine, you know, time, uh, and and they also have begin to open up, you know, sometime uh, in April, May, you know, uh, and. And if you look at the, the uh, uh, Indonesia situation uh, on, on the whole, I think like, like many other countries, many other, other developed countries, I think they also face uh, high inflation, you know, because due to the increasing in oil prices. Your inflation, you know, high inflation, you got global recession. Precisely, coming, and the food pricing and things food like that. Food pricing, That's right. uh, supply chain precisely, disruptions. Precisely. Mm. You have a lot of negatives in the, in the horizon. Yes, I mean, the, the uh, inflation is likely to 
to go up to maybe four five percent, you know, yeah. compared to their two three percent uh, here. But also, we also understand that the Indonesian government thinks that the inflation is manageable. So uh, and it's not likely that they will rise. They will raise their interest rate in the near future. You don't expect the change I, in I political regime. It, yeah, but if, even even if there is going to be. Uh, we are in the healthcare sector, so yeah. it's, it will be least affected by on, an, any of this uh, uh, macro uh, environment. And if you look at uh, our operator in, in Indonesia, Silom uh, Hospital, uh, they are the, the best healthcare operator there, one of the best. You know? so, okay. so, and if you were to follow their result for the past couple of quarters, they have been doing well, which is understandable because Healthcare sector is very resilient, you know. It's not recession proof, you know, as they were affected during the COVID as well, but definitely it's very resilient. And and there are definitely a lot of pent up demand, you know. If you are sick, you can only defer until a certain period. You know, you still need to come back to, to, to seek treatment, you know, once everything is stabilized and things like that. Which we are beginning to see uh, a lot of uh, patients coming back, you know. In fact, during the COVID situation, a lot of Indonesia is not able to travel out to yes. of Indonesia. So they will have to stay back yeah. uh, to seek treatment locally. And if they were to stay back, there's a high chance that they will come to our Silom Hospital. Because More Indonesians are falling definitely. sick, because is it? That is, uh, that is the best hospital that you can find uh, locally. Victor, just to satisfy the sceptics, is yes. this disposal initiated by the REIT or by Silom, the purchaser? There's some who may, who may yeah, I, yeah. So, I mean, to be honest, we are the one who mm. initiated in the sense that because this is actually part of the complete solution to the development work agreement that we have entered into yeah. with Lipo mm. Karachi way back in 2015. Mm. Remember, mm. Uh, during that time, we, 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 are, we are to build a new hospital, and yes. once the new hospital is completed, mm. we are supposed to swap the hospital. You know? And because of this road subsidence incident, uh, you know, the the construction of the new hospital is not going to progress, at least not on our side. Uh, the best solution is for us to divest it to them. Yeah, you've given a very strong case for divestment <coughs> this evening. Yes. Uh, I'm sure unit holders watching and hearing you would be convinced. But nevertheless, we need to take you through some of the uh, difficult questions sure. so that they would come to the EGM fully satisfied that this is the way to go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right? Mm. So that's your advocacy tonight. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so what is the capex that is needed uh, to re redevelop Surabaya Hospital despite the enlarged portfolio? Uh, does the manager still think that it is best if the REIT does not take on big redevelopment projects such as this? That, that, that is definitely, you know, mm. uh, you know, post the road subsidence incident or event, we actually have engaged a lot of professionals the engineer, uh, uh, you know, surveyor, quantity surveyor, and to look at the site to, to check whether uh, it's still feasible for, you know, for, for any of us to build a new hospital. Okay, the answer is yes, but uh, you probably need to maneuver, you know, certain structure, you know, to, to, to make the thing work, and there will be additional costs involved mm. in building a new hospital there. So we have actually done all our homework to determine whether this is something that's feasible. Yes, it's feasible, but there will be added complication. There will be mm. added cost involved because there's going to be added risk, you know, in that sense, you know, yeah. to, to build on that site. Yeah. So the site is still, is still feasible to build a new hospital, but it's just that there will be additional costs and, mm. and, and, and there will be additional risk. And this is not something that we would want to... Looking at the demography, really, I mean, Indonesia has a very strong population, very big population. Yes. Mm. Is it an aging population? Uh, like no, it's actually not. It's actually not a really aging population. Yes. You know. and, and, and yet you're hopeful that the hospitals will do well yep. because of the enormous number of people. Mm. That's correct. That's right? correct. And more and more are coming to hospitals. Also because of the lack of hospital in Indonesia. Mm. There are also lack of high or good quality hospital in Indonesia. This is the reason why... Uh, despite not aging population, in fact, Indonesia has a very young population. But because of the uh, uh, vast, you know, uh, number of uh, people in Indonesia, and I think what's important is that they have a very strong and growing middle in middle income, income. middle income, mm. and that will occur well with the. And, and are they like in Japan, putting their parents in nursing homes? Uh, no, no, right? no, no, not really, not really, not really. No, yeah, I mean, so it, you didn't mm. think of nursing home. 
uh, business in Indonesia? It's not really a fee. I mean, we thought of that as well. We thought we even thought of ner- building nursing home in in some of our existing hospital, but it may not work in the sense that because in Indonesia you will see that there are a lot of uh, helper, you know, maid that you oh, can so and also not the culture, maybe not maybe the not the culture to put your mm, yeah. your your you know your old folks in in that kind. Might of want to consider in Batam where Singaporeans can go. <laughs> I think that is that's for Singapore government. Not know. for you, for you, not for government. Yeah, I mean, mm. correct, correct. We we can. I mean, you can do the outcome. You know, you just build one nice one in Batam. I mean, we we definitely mm. can look at that uh, in future. But but I mean, the time you know when when Singapore was thinking of building a nursing home in, in JB, I think there's a lot of uh, uh, repercussion and things like that. Sri Lanka is going very cheap mm. now. Yeah, mm. it's time for you to move in there. Mm. Middle income is quite strong. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's business. I don't want to. <laughs> anyway, that, that, that is not considered a developed market. I think yes. the strategy is actually to go into the <laughs> developed market and, and instead of going to the developing market. Good. Mm. And consider that, you know, recently there are so many political situations yeah, happening I mean, in Sri I mean, Lanka and things like that. A, you know? It's a setback, but in like all countries, yeah. it will come back, you know. Yeah. It's a re- in the position to carry out redevelopment of uh, for any of its Indonesian assets, which are the and if so, which are the assets? Mm. I mean, we have a. I mean, we have a mandate. We have. We can develop up to ten percent of our AUM. Mm. Uh, of course, for those assets that we have held more than three years, and we intend to held uh, for a further three years, we have up to about twenty five percent. You know, so mm-hmm. definitely you can do that. But uh, unless it's very compelling, uh, mm. we would rather focus on buying complete property mm. and derive our rental income. You know. Yeah. Are you looking to? Divest other mature assets uh, in Indonesia as part of your capital recycling strategy. Yeah, I mean one of the strategies would be to reshape our portfolio. So uh, definitely assets that are non-core. You know, for instance, we have this hotel and country club that we have been putting on sale. You know, mm. since last year, this is one asset that we we looking at divesting, and we do have uh, uh, another uh, hotel uh, that's kind of linked to our hospital and also uh, two malls. Uh, these are non-core for us, so so if we are able to separate the title, we definitely will be looking at divesting uh, mm. some of these non-core assets. Okay, gentlemen, did you actually run a competitive sale process uh, to get the best offer for unit holders? Definitely, uh, yeah. we have actually engaged uh, Night Frank. Yes. To help us to market this Robert Hospital, and they have actually approached about uh, thirty-seven local and overseas uh, uh, healthcare player. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, none of them has made us an offer. Oh, know. really? Yeah, that's right. Why is that, do you think? Uh, I would say partly because of the age, uh, aging okay. of the asset, you know, asset. because this asset was actually built in 1970. Too mature. It's a bit too old, old. to their liking. They, I mean, if you look at the asset itself, uh, I've seen that uh, a couple of times. Uh, it's definitely very old and it's definitely not built to suit modern use and, and a lot of the structure is not mm. so efficient you know it's not so you feel you know, lucky uh, you yeah. feel lucky divesting Th- this is the reason why we have entered into this development work agreement with uh, Lipo Karachi to redevelop a new hospital mm. okay mm. and we are very sure that uh, they were wants to build a new hospital in okay. time to come mm. now how will this read be the proceeds from the sale of this uh, asset be used I mentioned one of the slides that we can actually use it to part our loan mm. so we can reduce some uh, uh, interest costs. There will be some saving interest costs. We can actually use it to uh, do asset enhancement or even deep asset development if we find uh, something that we find that is uh, compelling for us to do. Uh, of course, we can use it for uh, general working capital purpose and, and more importantly, we can actually use it to distribute Capital gain to unit holder. Yes, mm. yeah. That's okay. music to their ears. Yes. A little bit yes. for them, please. Yes. You know, and if approved, is the REIT going to make capital distribution? Or this is the one you said. Some of yeah. it, yeah. May, not may, but you will pass a resolution at the board to say we will give some to you. Yeah. Not definitely. just NTUC vouchers. <laughs> we will definitely look at that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So has the REIT been actively looking for assets to acquire? Any progress so far? Okay, this year itself, uh, I, I shared earlier on that we have completed our maiden acquisition in Japan, you know, 300 million of portfolio from uh, our sponsor, OU Lipo Healthcare. Uh, we are actually looking, actively looking at the Japan market, you know, so I, I certainly hope that by the end of the year, we will be able to acquire 
uh, a couple of more in Japan, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and we are also looking at other developed market as as well. For instance, Australia, and also mm -hmm. Europe, you know. So, so uh, yes, yes. I mean, to answer your question directly, we are looking mm -hmm. around. Victor, you look so very tired. Are you working overtime? Uh, I look tired. Uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously, I'm working very hard, you know, to to deliver. Uh, Return, you know, to, to our unit holder, you know, because they have supported uh, us. You know, you're one year. of the CEOs I have met who always look tired. <laughs> you know, you're working very hard for the unit holders. Yeah, I, I, I'll try to. I'll try to. Yeah. Thanks. So, has Reed been actively looking for assets to acquire any progress so far? I shared earlier on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, Could I you said that, repeat yes. that because they're asking the same sure, question sure, here. Sure. Yeah, I, I say on we, we we are definitely looking actively looking to acquire and more asset in Japan. Mm. Okay. And I certainly hope that, you know, by end of this year we will have be able to add a couple more in Japan or yeah. or maybe even in other developed country. Yeah. Any any uh, suggestions or any ideas about moving to other jurisdictions which may be having aging populations like, you know, uh, Australia, New Zealand? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I think we have we have highlighted some of this uh, <coughs> geographical area in our two point uh, growth strategy. Yeah, uh, that's actually to go into developed market, like for instance, uh, Japan, which mm. we are already there, and the next market that we are actually looking at is Australia. You know? mm. So we certainly hope that we will be able to uh, uh, do some in Australia in the near future. You know? Another shareholder is asking, what is the headroom available for this REIT? Okay, currently, uh, you know, post the Japan uh, acquisition, uh, our gearing is about 35, 36% now. If we were to uh, go up to 45%, we, yeah. we actually have a, a war chest of around 200 million Sing dollar. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, waiver of fees you now. Given uh, that this is an IPT and that the REIT will incur net loss from the proposed disposal, uh, the question is, did the IDs propose to the manager to waive the divestment fee of approximately 0 0.2 million? Did we, did we, earlier, you just said this guy looks very tired. Because <laughs> 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 you've been working so hard on this deal. But yeah. I mean, seriously, yeah, but yes, yeah, I mean, yeah. we, we, the, the ID did actually consider that and ensure that the basis is reasonable. Uh, I think you will look at the. Uh, you look at the value of the property under consideration. That is actually that actually represents a uh, hundred and forty-three percent capital gain. You know, yeah. over, over over the original purchase price. So actually, that is a significant amount. And like any transaction, there will be cost involved. You know, uh, and in this case, time efforts. You know. Yes. Yes. And all the time of this yes. tired looking CEO. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so, so I mean, the, the, yeah, the idea to actually no, I think the you've got the honest people on reasonable. the board and you've got a good CEO, there's yeah. no doubt about it. So, how is the issue price of the divestment fee units determined? Uh, okay, you know, for, for, for this uh, uh, divestment uh, fees of about 200,000. Uh, you know, because this is a related party transaction, so we will not be able to receive this in cash. We'll be receiving this in units, and the units is, is actually based on the ten-day V walk price. Right. So, so this is how it determine uh, mm. the issue price. You know, and these are all laid out in the the trust deed that that was. Because the done administrative this issue price of yep. zero point three zero seven four is That's more right. than sixteen percent below the last reported NAV per unit of zero point three six six five. So, hence the question. Now, if unit holders vote for this proposed yep. disposal, aren't you asking them to incur a net loss to sell the asset and then suffer a dilution because new units are issued to the manager at below NAV units? This is one question from a shareholder. <laughs> okay, it's, it's, it's below NAV, but it's higher than the uh, latest market price. I think the market price is about 27, 28 cents now. So it's still uh, at a slight premium over the market uh, price. And yes, I think there is a slight loss, largely because, you know, like what Richard has pointed out, there are some transaction uh, costs. In fact, the, the, uh, the value that we, or this, uh, uh, the cost, I mean, this, uh, this uh, valuation, is, it was similar to last year, you know. Mm -hmm. So we are able to hold on to this uh, valuation, you know. And, and we, we didn't really make any gain per se, because last year we did recognize uh, uh, the gain, you know, in, in, in the valuation amount and, and 
because we are selling at the same valuation last year and we will incur some loss because of the uh, uh, fees that is paid to the professional as well as the fees that is paid to man manager which I already explained early on. Mm. Okay, yeah. There's another question from one uh, shareholder, unit holder. With capital gain, how is it possible that NBV can drop? Okay, this capital gain was realized over the years. You know, we bought it during IPO and that was actually way back in 2006 at 16.8 mm. million. Every year we revalue our asset. Mm -hmm. you know, so the 143% capital gain ha would have been recognized over the last 15, 16 years. Okay? Uh, and the reason why the, our, N, uh, our NAV has dropped uh, slightly is also because uh, for this particular divestment, we will incur uh, some tax, tax for this transaction. Mm -hmm. So that tax has, has uh, uh, caused the NAV to, to dip uh, slightly. Okay, so hi management, thank you for the presentation. Could you share with us what is next for first read? Should this divestment fail to go through? Oh, he's not ex expecting a program. <laughs> <laughs> next success. Any alternatives, backup plans? Ho Chiong Chang. Okay, I mean, if, if unit holder feel that this, this is not uh, something that they would like us to continue, then we probably will continue to hold on to this uh, asset. And we will continue to collect our rental income, which is about 2.8 million for the next uh, 13, 14 years. Mm -hmm. But we run the risk that once Lipo Karaji or Silom were to build a new hospital, you, you will suffer. They, wait, they might vacate to the new hospital yeah, and, yeah. And, and they will not want to lease this hospital yeah. from us. Mm -hmm. So that's the risk that we will. Real will danger. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 so I think something which is prudent for us to do now, yeah. because we, you know, we know that ultimately you know, if, if uh, Lipo. Karachi should actually construct a new hospital, then definitely at that point in time when we try to divest the asset, I think that will be much more difficult. Mm. Yeah. Also, the value will definitely come down. Right. They will not pay us 40 mm. points. They won't pay. They won't, pay, they they won't yeah. pay us that amount. They will probably pay us a lower amount. Yeah. So there are many reasons why you have to divest in the interest of, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. and, 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 it, and I, I pointed out may, uh, many times in the, in, the, in the presentation that this is a mature asset. Mm. We already mm. make enough gain, mm. enough capital gain. And over the last 16, 15 years, we have collected um, our rental income mm. from this asset. Mm. And I think, I think it's time for us to part with this asset mm. and use that cash uh, <coughs> for other uh, more efficient uh, 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 growth asset. Growth mm. asset. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So we've taken you through some of the difficult questions. Uh, if there are no more from shareholders, uh, unit holders, mm. you may want to round up with your conclusion, make your, your case uh, in few words. Okay, I, I, I think it was uh, shared earlier on, I think this is really the best deal that we mm. can find for our unit holder. And this is also uh, a good opportunity for us to uh, uh, realize a mature asset, uh, you know, and we can also recycle cash, you know, to other high growth uh, area. And this will also, uh, fully, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, resolve the development work project that we have entered into, uh, you know, with Lipo <coughs> way back in 2015, and this will be a full mm -hmm. and complete resolution to the particular uh, mm -hmm. uh, project, you know. So I really hope that you know uh, all our fellow unit holder can support us, you know, uh, through this transaction. And the independent director. Yeah, I, I, I think we we'll, you know. We support uh, what, what management say. And so based on the opinion of the uh, IFA as well, I, I think the divestment is actually something that is prudent to do now. Uh, I mean, we, we can continue to hold on to, to a mature asset. At the risk. I think it is probably not... The, not you will hold on at the risk. Do. Yeah, right. right. I mean, it's just kicking the can down the road. <laughs> okay. So, you need to us, you've heard uh, the CEO and the independent director tonight. You've heard all the very strong reasons why there must be a divestment. It is done according to the board and uh, the management uh, in, in favor of you. So please make an informed decision. Uh, <clears throat> just one follow-up, last question. Help me understand why is it com compiling, uh, compelling to me as a unit holder, which your CEO just, just rounded up. As, uh, given all the compelling reasons, I mean, throughout the night you've been giving compelling <laughs> reasons. All right, so this will be actually, uh, re this is being recorded and there will be, uh, you can watch uh, the video 
on your website as well as SIS website. That's right. And uh, you can then, if you have more questions, you can write in and uh, the company is more than uh, happy to answer all your questions. So with that note, I say good night and thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. <coughs>